I've been developing a business relationship with a sponsor and they often send me a few things to select from to review. And as you've seen from the title and the thumbnail of this video, it's a solar panel. This is a folding solar panel. This is my first folding solar panel. So uh, take this with a grain of salt. I don't have a whole lot of experiences. All of my experiences with this have been positive. So this is a 150 watt solar panel. There we go. And it has some mud on it from a chicken. Sorry. <laughs> I have lots of chickens here. All right. We just fold this back up because I can and makes it easier to do videos. Uh, so it does have some folding kickstands. So you can adjust the angles. It doesn't have to be all the way out. It can actually stand up um, higher for, well, days like today where it's the sun's right there and you can just put the kick, pick, bleh, I can't talk, put the kickstand up a little bit. Um, it's 4 p.m. The sun is there. <laughs> it's pretty low in the sky. It's December. What do you expect? Uh, maybe not the best time to be testing the solar panel, is it? Backpackability, zero. We'll say it's kind of a lot heavy for a backpack. You could very easily add this on a camping trip if you're taking a vehicle. Um, like an ATV or a snowmobile, this would definitely work for that. Although maybe a snowmobile is not necessarily the best use case because, you know, winter. It's not too big. It's, you know, pretty darn thin. Uh, there's a, a bag here on the back for storing all of your accessories. And here's what's inside the zipper pouch. We have two direct power leads with a Wago style quick connect. And then this output box, which has USB, USB quick charge three, and a type C, and a DC direct output port. Also it comes with a set of alligator clips, a DC to DC barrel jack connector, which is standard for all of these. And then some carabiner clips because it has eye holes on the corners and you can hang it up between trees or on the side of a building or on the side of your car. In cases where it's, um, for, for example, if it's extra grassy, you can't realistically put that on the ground, but you could easily hang it uh, between two tree trunks. This would mean you get enough light or on the side of your car or ATV or uh, outhouse, or you know, I don't know why I'm thinking of an outhouse. Maybe my mind is always in the gutter. <laughs> and so it, it does have, is this reflective? All right, I thought maybe that this strip here might be reflective, but it's not. And just so you know, it's 150, peak watts of output. I have no way of testing that right now because the sun is not on my side. But here's a little bit that I do get from it. And we got some decent clouds and some intermittent sunshine. And here we are testing this solar panel. Right now, even while cloudy, it's putting out power. You can see 12 watts. I'm seeing up to 15 watts under full cloud. And this is going into my EcoFlow River Pro, which is convenient because it has a hours until full, so it's sat 75% and it's still gonna take 13 hours while cloudy. Now, right now I have only the EcoFlow Pro plugged in. Let's try plugging in an additional power load. I have this power bank here. And yes, it's putting out power directly to the DC line and also the quick charge port and I can confirm that this quick charge does work. Uh, it's not kicking in right now because my battery bank is full. Yeah, my battery bank is full at 98%, so that's not gonna kick into quick charge. But at the same time, I also have the DC 12 volt barrel jack connected, and there's an amp meter in series with this. So yes, it's putting out power. Not much, but power. Meanwhile, the power bank here is still charging. We can still see power going into there. We can still see power going into my solar generator. So all of the ports are active at once. The only downside I do see is that when you're charging a 12 volt lead acid, this is through the barrel jack 
alligator clips that they supply, it does clamp the voltage down on the solar panel direct output. So if I disconnect the battery, we can see that jumps right back and I connect the battery back up and it dives back down. Okay, we are under, well, near full sun. You can see the amps to the battery were high. Oh, come on. Okay, full sun's coming back. There. So that's uh, just about five amps going into the 12 volt battery at 15 volts. If I disconnect the battery, um, we'll also disconnect the USB charger. There we are. And so this can draw full power directly off of the solar line and we see that we're getting 85 watts and part of the reason that, that is not the same as the 150 watts that this is rated for and it's because the sun's traveling through a lot of atmosphere to get here because the sun is again low on the horizon so under decent sun on a day like today i can fill this up what says two hours remaining so we'll estimate that it would take approximately eight hours to fill this up. Probably would not be able to fill up a power bank like this on a sunny November fall day like this in the Northern Hemisphere. But I have no doubt that on a sunny summer day, this could definitely be filled. This is a 720 watt hour power bank. Here's another example use case. If you are ever in the desert, and you've been busy all night and you left some lights on you could definitely charge up your battery enough to start your vehicle oh wake up come on did you go to sleep <sighs> technology there we are there so we're getting half an amp into this battery now this battery in my truck is perfectly full so we do know it can put about four amps into a battery so that's about uh, 50 watts of charging power. So you could, in a few hours, easily put enough power into a battery to start a vehicle. And in order to be fair and truthful, there are two drawbacks that I've found with a solar panel. The first is the DC output is not regulated or controlled. It's directly off the solar panel. So if you're charging a battery straight, you'll need a charge controller. You can pick up a charge controller for like a lead acid or a lithium ion battery for really cheap nowadays, probably 20 bucks. Just look on Amazon. The other downside is this is not waterproof. Uh, so don't leave it out in the rain. It's the one thing that maybe could be improved somehow. I'm not sure that it can um, with the way this is built though. Oh, that's one thing to consider. So it's just a uh, fair weather only device. One last thing that they could add is some string. So they give you the carabiner clips, but no string. Just something to consider, you know, just trying to complete, be complete with the review. All right, I wanna thank Banggood for sending this over. And uh, on a price basis, this does compare to anything else that's out there. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper than some of the other, um, we'll call them name brands, solar panels that come with or are sold with power station companies. Uh, this will work with, I think every power station actually. The two that I have, it worked just fine with. It worked with my Midnight Solar Classic. Okay guys, uh, I do have a Patreon. So I, I have been urged by my current patrons to mention that and try to promote myself, which is something that I'm not terribly, I don't wanna say fond of, but seems disingenuous whatever sales you know uh and liking well don't like because that's kind of useless now i can't even tell if you've dis disliked it so comment and subscribe because that's all that matters nowadays and i'll see you guys around hope you enjoyed it goodbye